After an extended stay at Calliope it was off north for a quick stop at Rockhampton to reprovision our supplies of diesel, gas, water and food. Rockhampton Council have designated a free 48-hour camp spot right next to the botanical gardens and right across the road from the biggest shopping centre in town. What more could one ask for, especially as the cheapest diesel is right across the road, and the cheapest gas is another 50 meters on towards the shopping center. We also took the opportunity to go and view the latest Top Gun movie that has only recently been released. What a fantastic movie, and it made me yearn for my old flying days. We left Rockhampton and started to make our way westward towards the Queensland gem fields, specifically Sapphire where my father used to live and operate his underground sapphire mine. As we approached the small town we had a close encounter with a small kangaroo that skipped across the road in front of us. We managed to avoid it and continued on into Sapphire. The area that the local council has set aside for RV camping is on a sloping section of land, bordered by this road, which pretty well sums up the character of this dispersed settlement. I've dropped in here many times, especially while my father lived here working his mine, and the locals are a real mix of characters, from hardened miners to your fairly harmless scallywags, through to some real unsavory types that it pays to stay well clear of. You also find those who are trying to maintain being out of sight of the law, skirling themselves away in bush camps on their claims. The forecast for tomorrow is for another, unseasonable, rain event which will dump a lot of rain over a fairly short period of time. I position the RV high up on the sloping land to ensure we do not get too affected by the mud, that is bound to be everywhere after the rain has passed. Sapphire is a no-frills mining town, with locals trying to scratch out a living, and itinerate nomads descending on the town in the winter months to try their luck at uncovering some sapphires. Someone once said that while sapphire may not be hell, you do get a pretty good view of it from here. While it was said with tongue-in-cheek, there is a certain ring of truth, nonetheless, to the remark. My father's sapphire mine used to be located here, until a large storm one year flooded the underground chambers, and it eventually caved in. While it was hard work, even with the aid of a jackhammer, it was a pastime that gave my dad a reason to get up every morning. While he did find quite a lot of sapphires such as these examples, and this 29 carat zircon stone, he was more interested in just living a simple life in the bush. He had a similar setup as this at his mine, except that he did not have a powered lift to bring the dirt up from down the mine, relying on a manual windlass to bring the buckets of earth up from down under.
As you venture out from the central section of the town, you quickly come to realize from the amount of less than inviting signs, large gates, and not so friendly dogs, that people are not as hospitable as one would normally expect. This sign leaves no uncertainty about whether or not you should go and knock on your neighbor's door to borrow a cup of sugar. Living quarters are quite basic, with all types of materials being thrown together to fashion some shelter. You won't find any manicured lawns or rose gardens around here. In fact, some abodes are not much better than those that were found in the early years around Sapphire. Up until just prior to Covid, there were two shops in Sapphire, locally referred to as the Top Shop and the Bottom Shop, the Top Shop being further up the slope to the other shop. Alas, the Top Shop did not survive and now there is only one shop and a post office in town. True to the forecast, the heavens opened up during the night and a heavy downpour ensured up until around midday. Again, we took the opportunity to capture rain water to use to wash some clothes once the rain had subsided. Not long after the rain stopped, a somewhat wet and bedraggled parrot flew into our camp and decided to get up close and personal to us. The next minute, its mate also came in to say hello, being quite relaxed about being around us. Some muesli was proffered and they took to it eagerly, making themselves right at home. The next morning they flew in and woke us up, calling out continuously until more food was provided to them. And then, to our amazement and delight, all their friends also decided to come in for some free food, landing all over both the ground under the awning, on our table, and even perching on our heads, arms and shoulders. All in all, there would have been between 20 and 30 parrots in our camp, and they made quite a ruckus. Around midday the birds had left, and the rain clouds dissipated into more fluffier clouds that made their way towards the east. However, the rain did leave quite a mess, turning yesterday's dust into today's mud, that again saw me donning the gumboots to get around. The following day, after again feeding the parrots, we headed off, making a short day tour out to the next Gemfields town of Ruby Vale, a short 10 minute drive north of Sapphire. The difference in the two towns is quite substantial, with a quaint little village atmosphere, which includes a pub. One time in February in years past, we spent the whole day inside the pub as it was 51 degrees Celsius outside and the pub had air conditioning. The pub has a number of Billy Boulder constructed walls, similar to what was used to build my father's house. I came across some black and white photos of what it was like in Ruby Vale in the early days and, while Sapphire has somewhat languished, Ruby Vale has definitely kicked on. If you are ever up this way, I would highly recommend spending a few days around the gem fields, and who knows, maybe you will strike it lucky.